I'm Anna Scranny in Dubai. Joining me now for the next conversation is the new chairman of Swiss Media, this Sergio Emotti. And the title of our panel, Sergio, is Counting the Cost of Mega Hacks. So you're now the chair of a pretty big uh, reinsurance company. I just want you to set the stage for our global audience about your sense of the scale of cyber risk that there is out there, the, the, the cost of the mega hack. Do we really understand the scale of risk? Well, I think more and more, uh, uh, it's almost inevitable that uh, societies, companies, and uh, you know the political world understand and uh, uh, the necessity to tackle this uh, um, even more and more increasing risk. Uh, and in, in that sense, uh, uh, I think that uh, the awareness is there. Uh, if all the actions necessary to fix uh, the problem are are uh, in place, uh, that's a separate topic. But uh, in, in a world that is becoming more and more uh, digitalized, uh, it's quite uh, critical to address this aspect of uh, of uh, of uh, the risk posed by technology, which is coming with a lot of uh, opportunities, but of course, as I say, also risks. Well, let's just talk about the boardroom. Obviously, having sat as a CEO for a, a long period of time, now as a chairman, do you get a sense that boards globally um, are cognizant enough of cyber risk? Well, look, you know, first of all, let's start with that, with, you know, what management has to do and boards have to do. I think that uh, if you look at, uh, in general, uh, according to many surveys, but, you know, also from my own experience, uh, uh, the topic of cyber risk is uh, has uh, taken a big part of the agenda when we talk about operational risks uh, within any organization. I think uh, nowadays it's probably only second to the pandemic risk uh, and uh, the foreseeable, uh, probably uh, uh, potential uh, uh, slowdown in, 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 the, in the economies. But from a operational standpoint of view, it's very important to think about cyber risk as a way to protect yourself, uh, not only against uh, the, uh, the possibility of not being able to serve your clients, but also think about the reputational risk uh, associated with uh, being affected by a cyber attack. So management and boards more and more are thinking about those topics. Of course, the learning curve is uh, very steep. Not always do you have a situation where board members and, and, and uh, in general uh, management are fully aware of the complexities, but particularly when you talk about large organizations, uh, there is an increased uh, awareness of the topic. Maybe there is a need to make sure that uh, SMEs and, uh, and, and, and other players are coming up to the same level of uh, awareness. And obviously the work from home scenario is now part of our lives. How we work, how that blended model develops is, uh, I suppose, anybody's guess really at the moment. But that digitization has accelerated in 2020 through 2021 in the work from home. And that brings a new level of risk. Are your customers now coming to you with new inquiries? Is the scale of investigation about work from home and the risks associated with it top of the agenda? Well, yes, of course, this is, uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, more and more uh, a relevant topic uh, we discuss with clients and, and we can see in our own life. Uh, uh, well, of course, COVID has accelerated the digital uh, transformation and, you know, and many people working from home has uh, created opportunities, uh, but also has created, you know, you know the awareness uh, by, uh, uh, not only the institutions that are, are giving those uh, uh, tools to their employees to serve clients, but also by criminals to uh, exploit uh, uh, opportunities. And uh, so there is an awareness, there is a necessity to protect uh, uh, yourself, not only through uh, pure insurance, but also through uh, very elementary uh, um, um, practices in terms of how to uh, have uh, the right hygiene around uh, your environment in how you operate when we look at the world we're constantly trying to assess you said that obviously COVID is there and a mega hack is up there in the echelons of one two three uh, of risks i look at lloyd they are insuring as it were the backstop fund the central fund so they're insuring themselves against a pretty big event what does that say to you about the risk of a, a major global I suppose, tail risk? 
Well, in general, uh, um, I can't really comment about the specific, but uh, nowadays uh, uh, risks like in, in the cyberspace, uh, for example, are very, very hard to predict. Uh, if you think about the cyber uh, risk industry for an insurance company, uh, it, we estimate at Swiss Re that it's about seven billions of premium per, per annum. In, uh, in historical terms, that uh, this was a uh, benign uh, business where you would get uh, uh, decent, uh, decent uh, returns. Uh, nowadays, I, I would say probably the situation has become more problematic. Uh, we do expect uh, uh, the insurance uh, uh, pool for uh, cyber risk to increase uh, by uh, uh, threefold, almost uh, to 20 billion by 2025. But of course, all those risks cannot always be fully uh, covered and therefore there is a necessity for all the players in the market to cover tail risks. And uh, by the way, this solution you mentioned is a good example on how the system is able to come up with innovative uh, solutions to uh, uh, diversify risks uh, among uh, different players. It's obviously got consequences as well about writing a profitable book at Swiss Re. As you sit into the chair now, how much of your time is taken up with, with the board talking about the, perhaps the, the risk models, how you adapt and how you change in this environment about writing a, a profitable book? Well, a lot uh, across the board in all risks, uh, not only on cyber. Uh, uh, you know, you need to take, uh, uh, you know, not only an historical view of uh, patterns of, uh, of, of, uh, um, uh, of different data that were contributing in, in a very important way to the, the modeling of uh, uh, risks and their, and their four premiums. You need to take a forward-looking view that is also changing constantly. Um, you know, cyber, as we mentioned, is one example, but if you think of cli uh, climate change, and other aspect of our um, economy and societies, uh, uh, there is more and more a necessity to really recalibrate uh, um, uh, the weighting of historical data versus of forward-looking data in any model. When I think of cyber attacks, mega attacks, um, this year alone, Sergio, um, my own home country, the health service in Ireland held to ransom the colonial pipeline on the eastern states of the United States held to ransom. Now, these are, are sort of very visual perceptions of the mega attack. Do you think we've had some wake-up calls globally this year about, about what could go wrong? Yes, usually, look, you know, the, 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 the cyber uh, uh, risk and the claims industry, uh, some people uh, uh, Estimate uh, brings uh, you know uh, claims for around a trillion a year, uh, which is probably on the conservative side. If you think about uh, the fact that, uh, according to some data, only a hundred billion of that would come from Germany, so maybe it's even too low. So, but to answer your question, I think that every time uh, the phenomenon is 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 touching the lives of uh, people out there. Mm. You know, for example, uh, you talk about. Uh, you know, um, a pipeline uh, that is affecting oil prices and uh, and uh, or potentially in the future uh, uh, power supply, it it, it increases uh, not only the attention of consumer and people but also of politicians and uh, and therefore uh, we become more and more aware that uh, the need of uh, governments to think about. Uh, uh, policies that are allowing the private and, and, and the public sector to cooperate on how to tackle those uh, risks is, is very important. It's all about infrastructure, and, uh, uh, and I'm not surprised to see the U.S. Uh, talking about those kind of uh, issues uh, um, as a matter of national security. So you will see more and more um, governments also stepping in as a consequence of, uh, of this kind of attacks. I suppose that takes us back to the conversation between Putin uh, and Biden, really resetting the cyber agenda, one could say. When you saw that making the headlines, Sergio, what, what, what does that say to you about that, that government reset or that statehood reset on risk? Well, look, you know, the, the issue is, 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 without going into uh, uh, conspiracy theories about uh, how those things work, so it's, it's a matter of fact that there is... Uh, there are criminals out there uh, searching for opportunities uh, or or just maybe even only people that uh, uh, they are not just criminal in terms of trying to extract uh, economic value, 
people who have uh, an ideology or terrorism uh, uh, as a matter of, of their targets. So I think that is, you know, it's not surprising at all that when we talk about uh, uh, security and, and, and geopolitics, uh, cyber and, and this kind of risk are coming up in the agenda. At the end of the day, technology is, is another way to conduct, uh, uh, you know, um, um, uh, you know, uh, potentially create damages to economies and, 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 and countries. So I think it's actually in that sense, uh, maybe uh, um, and, uh, uh, the issue that we saw uh, with the, the colonial uh, uh, was a good wake up call so that allowed us at a relatively modest price to get even more attention to the topic.